thank you for coming out on this morning. It's such a pleasure to be at Dodge. It really is just an honor and a blast to, I was weeping almost all day yesterday. It was so good. Artless is my heart. A stranger berry there never was. Tartless, gone sour in the sun. In the sunroom or moonroof, roofless. For Brenda Shaughnessy, poetry is a deeply personal exploration of what she calls the real stuff of life. The struggle between heartbreak and joy is most notable in her acclaimed third book, Our Andromeda. If anything does characterize my work overall, it's that there's no experience that's all one thing. You know, it's not, there's not just sadness that overtakes you and there's no moment of joy. There's never just joy with an, you know, without any kind of critical central vein of despair. You know, Brenda is also an associate professor at Rutgers Newark. And it's this approach of working with the real stuff in life that she brings to the classroom. Just about to happen this, that actually makes me more dizzy than, than the actual description of it. Well, I have these sort of funny, very condensed as five as we're doing tips. Reading, like the I give them to my students because I've today. learned that I need them myself. So these are Brenda's practical, helpful tips on writing poetry. Number one, it doesn't write itself. I have the whole thing up here. You think, that's a great idea for a poem. But the poem isn't an idea. The poem is a physical action. You have to do this or this or there's no poem. Two, you know more than you know. Trust your history and your scary truths, even if you don't have a reliable version of them. There's so much knowledge, I call it the back brain, that there's way more back there than you have access to generally. Your poetry can find access to them. Three, stare at something, anything, right in front of you, and don't scan and search looking for something poetic. That's the first thing you have to do to start to write a poem. It's a great exercise because it forces you to defamiliarize what you see every day. Four, understand the power of naming. Why put off calling yourself a poet? It sounds like you're giving yourself some kind of weird spiritual title, but it's a practice, and the practice is the identity. And if you write poetry, you call yourself a poet because that naming has power. Number five, if you are frightened of a subject or something you've written, it just might be the very thing you must write. It means that there's something about that subject that is important to you. It's the kind of thing where you might actually spend your whole life writing around, to, against, with that fear. So it's unfortunate, but I do tend to say to them, if it hurts, that's where you should be going.